Health, Safety, and Resources Committee meeting uh, of September 21st. And I would like to call the meeting to order. So I invite the clerk to uh, conduct roll call. Supervisor Hashak. Present. And Supervisor McGordy. Present. Thank you. So um, we're going to move on to agenda item. Well, the, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping. So if, if you are here and you're representing uh, one of the agencies, uh, you're invited to participate in the active discussion with the committee. If you're a member of the general public, we will call on you at the end and you will have a three minute limit for, for uh, public comment. This is a little different format because this is a structured committee of the county, a standing committee. We've moved away from an ad hoc because on the advice of, of our county council, this is an ongoing continuous uh, um, committee, so uh, we have to move away from ad hocs, which are limited in time and scope, and this becomes a more standing committee that will be dealing with water uh, and drought since these issues don't seem to be going away very quickly. John, any comments? Well, I think uh, we, we moved to a standing committee too because of the SB 552 and the requirements of that, of having a, a drought task force. So Good I point. Think, um, anyway, yeah, I think that um, we're, we're meeting today because we are hoping to have more involvement of the um, people that this will you know, affect. And um, we're, we're responding to the, the public demands for, uh, or request for, for afternoon meeting. Yes, so uh, let us know how it's working out for you. So gradually people are joining us, which is great, and uh, we'll, we'll continue with our, our program. So uh, the first agenda item is 2A, is discussion and possible action, including consideration of input from local water districts, purveyors, and community partners regarding a proposal of project by, dis uh, by district. And this was an assignment that was given to me by Chairman uh, Williams as we are trying to fund some kind of a water resource team and he asked me to go by district to look at what I thought was important that Mendocino County should uh, participate in in some level. So, uh, Sarah, if you can bring up the PowerPoint, we'll, we'll take a look at it. So here it is, uh, five priority water projects for Mendocino County, and I have chosen one for, for each district. It'll be great to get feedback from people on this uh, so that we're able to make sure that we're making the right choices. Next slide. So what can Mendocino County actually do to help? Uh, these projects are not necessarily the counties, but what we can do, we can do political advocacy for local, state, and national assistance on these projects, and that is, of course, an important function of Mendocino County. So we have political connections to uh, the state and federal level. And the Board of Supervisors is, of course, where government is sort of applied, where the rubber meets the road. So we are an important link in representative government, and it's where programs actually get administered. And that's part of our, our jobs, is to make sure that we keep those connections open with uh, state agencies. And they do pay attention to us, so it's important for us to do the advocacy for these projects. Um, we're working on the creation of a Mendocino County water resource team, and we sort of have some, some pieces in place. So as, as you remember, uh, as we've worked through the, the drought ad hoc team, so we've had Amber Fissette and Howard Dashiel have been very important players. We had uh, Josh Metz on as a consultant, and we're looking to bring uh, someone back, and we actually have a RFP out for a water resource uh, specialist, and that could be a person, it could be actually a team. We don't know what we're going to get. Uh, what will happen is we will have, uh, as I understand it, the uh, process will close the RFP uh, the end of the month. And then Howard Dashiel and myself and probably John Harper from uh, UC Cooperative Extension will deliberate on who we should pick. And also John, if he wants to participate. And the idea behind that is that um, this person will be aligned with the University of California Cooperative Extension because they are also hiring water people. Their cycle is that they plan to have a call for positions in November, uh, and they want to have a, a water kind of specialist, a hydrologist and a climate change specialist assigned to Mendocino County. 
So since we can't really afford a full-blown department because that costs somewhere between 700000 and a million dollars, we thought we could work with UC Cooperative Extension and kind of get our bargain rate since we're already staffed with uh, administrative people and technical support. Uh, we'd be able to start working on uh, water issues and, again, trying to do what we did last year, which is assist people who are already working on issues. We'll also uh, be conducting public stakeholder meetings like the one we're in right now. Uh, and uh, Mendocino County will be able to provide technical support, grant writing and, and grant support and grant administration, which is something that the uh, CEO's office is set up to do. And they do it very well right now for, for some of our uh, <clears throat> disaster relief and, and other initiatives that have happened in the last four or five years. So, we have a lot of confidence in Darcy and our team. And, you know, their focus really is, in most cases, Mendocino County will support and not necessarily lead if other agencies are involved. So we're, we're primarily in a supportive role. However, what we're finding is that we, we have 42 entities that uh, are involved with uh, providing water in the, in the county, and, and a lot of them don't have capacity to write federal grants, for instance, which is something that we actually technically could bring people together to, to do uh, collaborative grants, and the county can help in the leadership of that. So we do have some capacity for it. We're able to, to call on technical support uh, from outside consultants when we need to. So you know we have some organization. It's really clear that we want to be in, uh, in the room, so to speak, as the state is going to allocate uh, a fairly huge amount of money in the next five years to address drought issues and, and water infrastructure. So we want to be sure that we're there, or we're part of the, the cycle and the, and the discussion. Okay, so next slide. So these are some of the things that I think that are important. Uh, the first one is District 1 consolidation of the Upper Russian River uh, Water Agency, or IRWA as it's called. So this is a joint powers authority. This is ongoing, uh, working for the consolidation of Ukiah Valley's water. The board includes a single member from Willow County Water, Cal Palo County Water, Redwood Valley County Water, Millview County Water, and most recently, Ukiah Valley Sanitation District, as well as the city of Ukiah. So really, the planned objectives here is to connect water service from Ukiah to Redwood Valley to ensure that there is always a safe, clean, reliable, uh, and water system supply and potable water to residents in the service area that manages as a unit. So the idea is that when you turn on the tap, there will always be water, whether you're in Redwood Valley or uh, all the way to Talmadge, basically. So <clears throat> um, it's, there's ongoing discussions with this. this. The idea is to create a, a lot of resiliency so that if surface water isn't, isn't available, that, that we have groundwater. Um, the droughts kind of taught us that we really need to, to be flexible and nimble, and, and as it turns out, the water companies already are pretty much connected one way or the other. It's just that it's the, the idea is to, to improve uh, the ability uh, to, to deal with whatever situation that the drought uh, may send us, such as having curtailed water for surface water, which has been a big, big issue for, for us in the last two years. Um, the consolidation of small water systems for more reliability and efficiency is a stated goal of the State Water Resources Agency. So funding is available for this through uh, probably Department of Water Resources and, uh, and their, their drinking water program. So that th for District 1, I, which is my district, I thought that this one really rises to the top if uh, uh, trying to set a community goal, which is already underway, so I'm not going to take credit for this, but I can certainly assist uh, and Hopefully, hopefully making this uh, work. Okay, uh, any comments from anybody who's actively involved in the system? And if you are, I'm not quite sure who's on our panel right now. Does anybody raise their hand? Okay, no comments, we can come back later. Next, what's that? Okay, why don't you put Elizabeth on? Elizabeth. Hi, everybody. Elizabeth Salomone. I serve as the general manager for the Russian River Flood Control and Water Conservation Improvement District. 
we are not part of Irwa, nor we are um, the city of Ukiah, which are the entities that are looking at consolidating. Supervisor McGordy, could you explain how you see the county supporting this consolid this proposed consolidation effort? So, so uh, there's there's two places where the county could play an active role. The first one is in LAFCO. Uh, we uh, the county is represented by two supervisors on LAFCO, and they will need the assistance of LAFCO to to get this through, so we can help uh, shepherd the process there. And the other way is working directly with the state water. Uh, resource agencies to and and our uh, uh, elected officials and in the assembly and, and the Senate to be sure that we can advocate for funding and uh, you know that's some of the help that we can provide that I think is important I suspect that you know the individual agencies that are working on this are, are quite confident as well I they are uh, our, our exact help is um, probably more as political cheerleader and helper rather than to actually lead an, an effort. Does that make sense? Elizabeth? If I may, um, yes, that, that does make sense. Because this project, as you're describing it, um, and the work that the county would potentially do to support it, doesn't really involve, I mean, the, the, the support at LAFCO and through the State Water Resources Control Board, and you know, legislative um, advocacy. That's all pretty much. Um, there aren't, you know, f there's no funding uh, requirement to to do those types of things, really. And these um, entities that are involved don't really meet the terms that you were talking about, like which were like agencies that don't have the capacity or resources to implement uh, to to gain funding or implement projects. I just wonder if maybe there there's a project in region um or district one that that does need more um support i the flood control district supports the consolidation uh you know moving forward with exploring it um and look forward to you know having more information about how that's moving forward um but i wonder if there's in this structure that you're explaining if there might be some other projects that we could consider for district one that um that do need more support from the county and it kind of leads me to the question of um, what what is the intention of the public process for moving forward with identifying these projects? And will this be implemented by whatever entity is awarded um, the contract through the RFP? Like what, what's kind of the next step is another question. Well, the, the first thing is to thank you, Elizabeth, for, for your comments. So um, the first step, of course, is just to get this out here for public feedback. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it could be that there are other things that we go after if, it, it, you know, it, it, there, there may be, it may, it may require limited amounts of, of time to actually do this from, from the county's uh, perspective, but there may be other things that are more pressing. And, and certainly there will be opportunity uh, to, you know, come up with other ideas. Uh, the other thing, of course, that if we go on to the next uh, image, the, this is one of the other areas that I, I see as a priority for District 2 is to winter groundwater recharge in floodplain areas. And this is something that I support. And uh, the Ukiah Valley Basin Groundwater Sustainability Agency is interested in is, is creating a recharge in, in our aquifer. And this is an example of something else that we can do. These are not all cut in stone, but this is also another important uh, thing for us to work on. So it, I've been talking with uh, Sean White, who works for the city of Ukiah. Um, he's pointed out that recharge is something they'd like to work on. They don't quite have the capacity because they're quite literally up to their ears and work uh, implementing a lot of infrastructure. So uh, we would like to have at least one test area where we could try to uh, do groundwater recharge during periods of high flow. And uh, it would be great to have some support from the University of California on this because they have specialists like Helen Dahlke and Toby Jean who are working on it. And it'd be great to start to get some experience. So uh, City of Ukiah and Ukiah Valley Basin Groundwater Sustainability Agency both would be supportive of us doing some work on this. That's an example. If you have other ideas, Elizabeth, I'd like to hear them. 
since you asked, <laughs> thank you. Um, I like the idea of recharge project. As you know, um, I serve as the chair of the technical advisory committee for yes. the GSA. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we were talking about uh, this implementation grant application. And I asked if the city of Ukai would be interested in including, <clears throat> including the Riverside Park project. Um, maybe we could expand this a little bit. So it wasn't just Riverside Park, but there are lots of ag lands in District 1, um, believe it or not, that could potentially be good sites for recharge as well. And I know we have a meeting on that next week, I believe, or coming up soon anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we could talk about expanding this idea a little bit so it isn't just this one location. Yeah, I, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and it's just, so what this involves for people who aren't familiar with it is that when, when the water is high, we would f deliberately flood uh, some of the Ukiah Valley to to recharge uh, groundwater. This is one approach to to dealing with uh, making sure that we have sustainable water supply. And it could be that we don't need to do this very often. Sometimes it happens on its own anyway. Sometimes we're getting recharged whether we want to or not when we, we have floods, which are fairly normal for us. We normally have uh, at least three a decade. But uh, yeah, there's other sites. Uh, Laurel Marcus just recently completed a study uh, on potential areas where where she thinks groundwater recharge is is feasible, and yeah, we could expand it. it. It doesn't have to be limited just to one area. Again, the idea is to put some some thoughts or some thought into the what could be done. My question on District One and Two is, you know, the the Potter Valley project. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not on there. And um, what what are your thoughts on that? Because certainly that's like the highest priority and if if the projects in district one are seemingly you know kind of moving along mm -hmm. you know and the potter valley project certainly needs county state national attention you know what what do you see as our role or this water team's role in that Boy, that, that's a good question, and we're still formulating that. So I, as I think about this and as I've talked with uh, various stakeholders, the, the one thing we have, our one superpower, is our ability to uh, organize politically. And uh, I've come to the conclusion how, how we're going to deal with the Potter Valley Project is that we will probably have to form a regional special district that will require uh, input from multiple stakeholders. Uh, we've talked about this, and, and the Sonoma County Water Agency has gotten a grant from the uh, Urban Multi-Benefit Grant Program to form a Russian River Water Users Forum where we will discuss how we would make that work, how we would take over the water rights and infrastructure that pg and &E presently controls, how we would get, um, <clears throat> how we'd monetize it, how we'd pay for it. And the, the reason that I've, I've shied a little bit away from it because I, I, I feel that some of the other board members are not supportive uh, at the moment of, um, because of maybe the process is a, a little bit too diffuse and not clear as to how the county should be engaged or funding. But what I'm thinking is that we probably, uh, again, advocacy and, and uh, trying to work politically with uh, a state uh, elected officials and, and resource agencies is probably one of our most important roles. I, you know, technically we have a lot of good technical people from Sonoma County Water Agency and then also within the uh, Mendocino Inland Water Power Commission. We have legal people. Uh, political, though, is the political piece is probably where we, Mendocino County can really play a role. Uh, another interesting thing that happened recently to me at, at uh, the rural county representatives of California. Uh, we had uh, Patty Poppy came to talk, who is the president of PG&E. And I directly asked her about the Potter Valley Project, uh, as well as Eddie Crandall from Lake County. We had a discussion with her. And I said, it's probably not a big deal to you guys, but it's a huge deal to us. It's really our existence. <clears throat> and if that water were, were not to be available to us, it would really be a problem. So, um, you know, she listened and she said, well, I've learned more about Potter Valley than I knew in the past. And then recently at, at the RCRC annual meeting, uh, there are representatives from PG&E and we're gonna try to organize some discussions between the, the supervisors uh, 
along the Russian River, which would include myself and Supervisor Mulheron, <coughs> as well as uh, Supervisor Gore and uh, Supervisor Hopkins from uh, Sonoma County to have a kind of a high-level discussion about how can we move this forward, because right now we're kind of frustrated. We've been meeting in behind closed doors with lawyers, uh, and you know it's not moving things forward as fast as we would like. So that's kind of, uh, does that help? <laughs> yeah, it certainly um, explains what happened to the Potter Valley project. Yeah, it's still there. It's just yeah. that when I, when I think about, okay, what, what can one supervisor and, and one small group of motivated people accomplish? I, I want to make sure their goals are realistic and that, that we actually make progress. And that's why this is not necessarily the most important things, but the, these are things I think that we can do. Um, Beth, do you have any other further comments? I do, thank you. Um, I think all of these projects that we're talking about, Potter Valley Project, uh, you know, continuing the diversion from the eel and, and these two that you've proposed, all of the commonalities uh, between these is that the public doesn't know a lot about uh, this work, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we, really are lacking, I think, countywide is additional outreach and education, um, help with water use efficiencies, but, you know, from water users in industry, ag, and domestic use, um, the offering of rebates for water efficiency, um, you know, efforts and appliances, and um, really just kind of furthering the efforts of the state's campaign, uh, which they call Save Our Water. And so there's a lot of resources already available and just using those resources that are available and really educating the public and uh, providing that outreach. And that could be beneficial to the Potter Valley Project efforts. It could be, um, you know, explain to people what recharge is and why it is good sometimes to irrigate when it's raining. Um, and, um, you know, talk more about the consolidation and how it will benefit ratepayers and overall um, conjunctive use of groundwater and surface water in the Ukiah Valley and Redwood Valley. So I think that might be something worth considering as a project um, effort for the County Water Agency. You know, I, I think you're you're spot on, and that's one of one of the things that we want to do is increase the discussion about water all over Mendocino County because that's really applicable, really, to any of the, the five districts. We we have issues with water everywhere. It's it's not you know exclusive to one zone, and uh, try trying to um, figure out how we're going to be resilient, how we're going to deal with climate change, where, as I said before, we don't necessarily get all the water that we need in one season, which is how our present infrastructure is designed. We always figured, hey, it rains 35 inches at least a year in Mendocino County, and, and it was a rare year that we didn't have to worry about having adequate water from, from beginning to end, but, but now things are changing. So uh, you're right, behind everything, that, that has to be one of the most important goals, Beth, is just education and communication. That's why we're having forums like this. And I, I guess Beth, you you brought up the the process for um, giving input to this to this process, and I think that uh, what Supervisor McGordy has done is really provide a a template. You know, kind of like, hey, these are some ideas for discussion, and and you know, they're well thought out. There there a lot of experience behind it. Um, but do you see a process that you know you think would be you know could help us move these things along? Are you addressing to me or Beth or both? Well, I was, <laughs> Beth brought it up, so I was just. I was Thank you, Supervisor Hescheck. I I think it is important to bring this to the public forum a little bit further. I think this meeting is great, but. I'm not sure people were able to find this meeting today. Um, <laughs> it it was uh, buried in a line of the uh, County Water Agency newsletter is where I found it, but that was the only notification. So I'm a little concerned we're really not getting a full representation today. And seeing as I'm so far the only public member talking, <laughs> I, uh, I kind of wonder. Um, and I think that this idea is a good one and an important one um, to have projects from across the county um, be priorities for the water agency to support. But maybe, yeah, I think it's really important to take that extra step for public engagement, making sure 
um, that people are aware of this and that their voices are being heard. Um, of course, as always, I'm happy to support an effort to, you know, conduct some sort of public uh, awareness and and workshop or something. Mm -hmm. You just let me know. Well, thank you. And I, I think that's a really good idea. And I think that's are some of the next steps. We, we're a little bit constrained here because of, of our political process and how we have to conduct uh, meetings as supervisors. But uh, this isn't the only way to communicate, obviously. So uh, I don't know if, if Charlotte would like to weigh in on, on how uh, we could do outreach and, and, and special um, special meetings or, or hearing sessions uh, as a as a committee, or um, I, I would love to hear from her, her thoughts on it. I don't, uh, Charlotte Scott, Assistant County Council, uh, I think as you did today, you can conduct additional special meetings as needed in consultation with the clerk of the board and, and noticing the input and presentations you would like to receive on, uh, on the, the topics of, of this committee. Um, that that seems to be and this is that's how we're here today if you have any other specific questions though i'm happy to answer so, so when when we uh <clears throat> when when we do want to do a, a hearing for instance so uh we as the public health safety and resources committee so do we have to notice that through clerk of the board and 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 have an agenda and we're not hearing you are you on Sorry, um, the button might not have been pushed. I was agreeing. Um, okay. Yes, um, yes, Supervisor McGordy, um, you would need to properly agendize and notice the meeting, um, just as with any other standing committee meeting, as you did for this meeting, and that that would be the way to um, to have it comply with your Brown Act requirements. Yeah, and you know we we did that before with the the drought ad hoc, and I thought that was some of the most successful things we did, where we had a road show and actually went around and met in communities with Josh Metz, and got direct feedback and involved the supervisors in the different districts. I thought that was really useful. And uh, Supervisor Hasjack, would you be supportive of that as well? Yeah, certainly. Okay, so that's something that we can work on as or, as we progress. Okay, so. Um, Let's go on to the next image. I'm sorry. Oh, is there another hand raised? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Devin. Oh, yes. Good hi. Good afternoon. Um, I was just going to sort of submit a couple comments on the first couple options here. You know, I do appreciate uh, this is Devin Bohr of Mendocino County Farm Bureau. I do appreciate the kind of compilation of the list here. I know these are several projects that have been, um, you know, brought up in various, you know, sort of water related meetings in the last year or so. So it's good to sort of have a, a start of a consolidation. Um, in terms of some of the roles, you know, I think, you know, for specifically looking at consolidation, um, one of the points that the county may be beneficial in sort of the conversation, perhaps is sort of an overlap with with the land use sort of resource use conversation, right? So several of the districts that are proposing um, consolidation and, and we haven't seen the proposal, it hasn't been provided. Um, and I'm sure we'll stay engaged, but you know, agriculture is sort of a, an outlier for several of these districts. Uh, Rubber Valley, Willow, um, and there are some other, you know, sort of service within those other areas. Uh, that is not just municipal based. And so that's always been sort of a question in terms of where that might go within the, that scope of that project. Um, so that might be something that um, Supervisor McGordy and uh, Supervisor Mulhern might be able to continue to assist with in that conversation. I mean, obviously freeing up water supply um, for municipal purposes and domestic purposes, you know, gives some additional flexibility to these districts to work for agricultural um, water supply as necessary. So um, we're hopeful that maybe that project will be productive. Um, we just wanted to bring that up. And, you know, in terms of the recharge, um, I think there is merit. I think we're learning more about sort of where um, those specific proposals may be more appropriate based on geologies, uh, and other limitations. Um, so, you know, we'll, we're kind of continuing to evolve 
So ultimately, as we go through the rest of these projects, I think maybe we can come back to it at the end or it might come up under another item. I, the bigger question I have is sort of the scope and scale of capacity of where the county envisions um, their limited resources, whether that be staff, fiscal, um, or what may be it with sort of the capacity of moving forward with these proposed projects in the districts. Um, and if there's sort of prioritization uh, within sort of what's being proposed today. So just something to think of in the bigger picture. Thank you. Thank you, Devin. Yeah, those, those are all good questions. We don't quite have the answer with, and this is a classic case of we're sort of building the plane while we're flying it. Uh, but we, we know we can't sit on the sidelines, and we, we know that Mendocino County for many, many years has been a little bit passive when we could have been more active and, and probably would have been helpful. And I think last year was a real wake-up call when we had some of our, our communities and many of our citizens just running out of water, and we, we really don't want that to happen. So that's some of the what this is thinking about. And you notice that uh, 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 as it goes to District 1 and 2, um, we have an amazing resource there, which is the, the Ukiah Valley Basin groundwater aquifer. Uh, and we, we realize it's not just Ukiah Valley that, that necessarily benefits from having that as a resource. It, it, it was used uh, effectively during a drought emergency to, to help out with the water supply on the coast. Both Fort Bra Bragg and, and uh, the town of Mendocino benefited from it. So that's why it's really important to, uh, to do what we can to manage that aquifer. And also think about, I, I hate to think about this, but if for some reason we don't have water coming from the Eel River, what would it look like? You know, and this is where, uh, you know, we, we have to face that reality that that could happen, which is a really scary one. And that's, that's why we're, we're thinking about the importance of how groundwater can give us a, a, a lot of uh, resiliency and, and help us manage uh, in, in the cases of limited water. Okay. I guess my question would, would, what would the county's role be in, you know, obviously this is a good idea to mm -hmm. do the groundwater recharging, but what would the county's role be that the city of Ukiah or Ukiah Valley Basin Groundwater Sustainability Agency aren't doing? So, so in talking with Sean White, like I said, he, he feels a little bit that he's kind of overwhelmed with construction projects and things, so he doesn't feel like he has capacity to do this, even though he has a strong interest and belief in needs doing. Uh, we're, what we can also do is provide the science because, again, we're the University of California Cooperative Extension is one of our county departments. Uh, we have two superb scientists working on groundwater recharge right now, Helen Dahlke and Toby O'Gene, so we have a natural connection with them. And I'd, I'd want to involve them. Uh, we could, could write and manage a grant uh, through UC Cooperative Extension for that. Uh, so so th those are the kind of supportive roles I think that we could play. We, we could be pretty active in this as a county via the University of California, because this is right up their alley. This is what they do is, is you know, research. And uh, we're, we're setting up well and uh, with the Ukiah Valley Basin Groundwater Sustainability Agency and, and starting to get our own independent monitoring stations. We now have, uh, Beth, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're supposed to have 10 that will eventually be online. And uh, this gives us a chance to see what the effects of some of this winter recharge could do. Okay, next image. So, so uh, unfortunately, John was on vacation when I had to put this together, but I, I, I know we've talked a lot about this and we've even applied in grants to try to find out a little bit more about delineating and mapping the groundwater basins of Little Lake Round and Long Valleys. So we don't have a lot of hydraulic Hydro hydrology information on these uh, locations. So what we'd really like to do is create a better understanding of water dynamics of storage and extraction uh, in these important basins. We'd like to know, you know what the potential yield is, uh, how we're doing, much like in the Ukiah Valley, uh, get a sense of, of recharge rates. I, I think individually there's people who know a lot about that. For instance, Jim Shields is someone who seems to know what it takes to recharge the, the basin under uh, Long Valley. Uh, and as water use has increased in the past decade for various purposes, the drying of domestic wells is a huge concern among many residents, particularly, again, on sort of the edges of, of these basins where, uh, or in places where water is being extracted at pretty high rates. 
Um, I think developing a conceptual model of the basin's hydrology and delineating probable boundaries and yields of the three aquifers would be the goal of this study, just as we've done to the Ukiah Valley Basin. We have kind of described w where the water comes in and where it goes out and, and uh, what's available for use and also what is, uh, y you know, the, the effect of sustainable yield on any given year. What we, we don't want to go through the, the, the full-blown um, <clears throat> groundwater sustainability agency process, but we'd still like to know more about what's out there. And uh, finally, that allows for potential water management uh, can be studied to avoid drying out of shallow wells in dry years. John, any thoughts? Well, I think that the um, Round Valley received a half a million dollar grant to do studies on their, their groundwater basin. Um, we'll see how that goes and um, how quickly it happens. You know, I don't know the real specifics on it, but it's very encouraging to get that kind of grant and uh, you know in talks with the city manager and the mayor of willits that they're talking about um, um, the, well they're looking at the feasibility of um, connecting with pine mountain water and so so uh, you know like you said earlier that the state water resource board is very encouraging towards those kind of um, consolidations like in the ukiah valley and so it might happen in the Little Lake Valley. And, and I know there's also been studies about connecting up with brook trails as well, hasn't there, or interest? Yeah, I think brook trails is pretty self-sufficient at this point, and um, I don't know if there's that interest at, right now. Okay, fine. Thank you for the feedback on that. So, um, you know, again, I didn't have the opportunity to run this by you, so if you think there's something more important that that should go on District 3, but I'm, I'm thinking if long-term for Mendocino County, if we have the money available right now from the state, uh, because these are expensive studies, it would be great to get this uh, done once and for all so that we we have a better knowledge of, of you know, the water basins in, in the county. Yeah, and if um, Jim Shields is on the line, I don't know if he is, but he he might have some ideas about Long Valley and and the other um, you know water situations. You know, we've talked quite a bit about um, you know the capital improvement needs and operational needs of some of these water districts and so sure. jim are you there or are you willing to make some commentary uh yes i am here can you hear me yes oh okay um yeah uh, uh, first of all um i think one of the things we might need is a little more structure to what we're doing here i mean that at some point we're going to be being serious about the uh, actual resurrection of a water agency and, you know, it, it, in some form, um, you know, then as far as... Uh-oh, did we lose Jim? Am I back? You're back. Okay, sorry. Um, I think, I think one of the things that we, uh, that I'd like to see anyway, if it's plant the seed is, uh, that kind of goes along with what uh, Beth was um, talking about communications with the citizens here in this County, um, uh, under this, this standing committee of the board of supervisors, it appears to me that we need some sort of, of working committee to actually start you know, working on some of these things for two years now, both the state and the county, you know, we've been operating under emergency drought orders, uh, you know, and sometimes it doesn't appear that there's all that much urgency to really start trying to, you know, a lot of activity, but, but not much productivity, I would say. And um, with Especially on the on the communication side, and then there's some actual work that that needs to be done that would uh, flesh out, for example, here in 
District 3, you know, as far as what's going on with our, our water basins and aquifers and, and that sort of thing. And that gets back to, speaking of a water agency, I mean, two primary goals of that would be to collect and, and collate water information and data. And the second thing would be to, as far as um, capital and operational projects, you know, begin looking for funding sources uh, for those things. But anyway, um, my, my, my question would be how, re how, re how restricted um, is this standing committee, when, if it were to form a working committee? And went to, well, John and Glenn, we, we all went through the, the process with the uh, uh, well extraction, uh, water hauling um, ordinance committee. Um, you know, and, and, and that's the sort of thing, you know, that I'm talking about where you have it, it's a fairly small group, um, but they have a, uh, um, a very concise portfolio and you've got people working on it where we can actually start getting some of these things done sooner. You bring up a bunch of good points and uh, you, you uh, submitted to me a, a great uh, collect and collate data uh, plan, which basically would would have uh, every water agency give some of their basic operational information uh, to the county as to be a repository so there's, there's a place to be able to access uh, information about different parts of the county for water, which for planning is really critical because we, we know that um, water is a limiting factor in, in development and you really, a lot of Mendocino County is, is dryish uh, because of our, uh, the fractured rock geology that we have. We don't have basins all over the place and a lot of our water supplies are quite limited. So uh, th those are, are important data that we, we need to, to do. And I agree with you, the, the, the well uh, water extraction for sale committee that we had was extremely uh, useful and, and provided us with a lot of good ideas and data. Uh, and it could be that what we end up doing is, as we kind of commit to projects that we have an advisory committee for them specifically. So, you know, that's, that's one way to do it. The other thing that is useful is, as Ukiah Valley Basin Groundwater Sustainability Agency has found is to have a technical advisory committee that is separate from the, from the board of directors that, uh, you know, works with uh, consultants and, and compile scientific information and, and gives direction and, and help with the board to uh, tackle technical questions, which I, I think is a, a good idea. I've kind of suggested that also for cannabis as a way of go moving forward because there's policy, but there's also technical information that you need sometimes to, to make good decisions. So, um, you know, how this is gonna play out, we don't know yet. Uh, this is still kind of in the beginning stages, but I, long-term Mendocino has gotta be more involved in water than we have been in the past. Yeah, you know, and, and, for, and for for example, on the on the collection and, and collation of the information, you know, I, I've spoken to a number of different water agencies. Um, you know, for example, uh, with Beth, um, she's willing. Um, my district is willing. You know, as as far as getting the ball rolling on that, you know, to to send the letters of inquiry out to the different public sector water agencies in this county. And so we can start getting that, that information rolling in because it's, it's, it's going to supplement and in a lot of cases amplify, um, you know, for example, here in, in district three about creating a better understanding of, you know, the water dynamics. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's what that exercise is all about. And, and, and some of you do have good records uh, like, like your uh, agency, knows how much water you pump, you uh, f follow the uh, uh, water elevation. So that's really useful to, to know that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, no, real, real quick, uh, we also work in partnership with an environmental group, um, the Eel River Recovery Project. And uh, we've been partners with them for almost a decade now. And there's really some good news uh, um, that they have um, initially re uh, released a report that uh, in 10 Mile, uh, Cotto Creek, 
And uh, some of the smaller branches like Mill Creek and Little Case Creek, that for the first time in years, um, we've had the return of uh, coho. And we believe that the further study needs to be done on it, but we don't think it was just coincidental <laughs> uh, that with the, this year probably being, you know, compared to um, last year, as far as cannabis production, last year was probably the, uh, the, the most cannabis that's ever been produced in this county. This year, definitely a record for the, the, the least amount. And we think that all has to do with um, the, the cumulative effects of, of how water is being used used in water uh, in our watersheds. And so, you know, that's good news. I mean, we're a groundwater agency, but um, uh, our, our policy is water is water. And so uh, we've always done as much as we can, you know, uh, by working with um, other local groups who, um, are dedicated to helping our, our watersheds re, uh, recover. So anyway, you know, kind of getting back to the idea of, you know, at some point we're going to have to get serious about what this, this entity, this vehicle of a water agency is going to look like and what exactly that it's doing. In the interim, you know, what, what I'm saying is, is that we need some sort of uh, temporary interim uh, vehicle or entity that will allow us to start getting some of this work that, that really needs that really needs to be done sh should have been done could have been done you know uh, months ago so um anyway if, if there's if there's some way that, that we could form you know either a number of of, of uh project or, or issue oriented um committees where we could actually put put them to work and uh, move, move this process of, of along um, a little faster and further than than where we are right now after all we are in the ides of september and winter is going to be upon us before too much longer yeah well well thank you for your input it's valuable and and uh, uh, again you know uh, ha having uh supervisor hastrick here uh representing you is important and he's hearing this and taking notes like i am and uh you know th this will will help when we have our discussions about what do we do about water policy for Mendocino County. You also bring up another really important thing, which is that we, we have to think about watersheds as well and the, the cumulative impact of what happens in, in watersheds. Um, the, the water agency before it kind of folded in the, the, the Great Recession was focused very much on, on watershed uh, health and, and uh, water quality and, and not enough maybe per, perhaps on water supply, uh, but we you know, we shouldn't forget that. That shouldn't be something that, that is no longer an issue. It certainly is. And certainly everything that lives in the watershed is an issue and, and getting that balance between keeping the environment healthy as well as uh, providing for health and human safety needs is something that, and agriculture is something that we, we have to address um, as policy for the county. You know, Glenn, and, and, and there's, this is a follow up to what you're saying. It, it's also critical that in the unincorporated areas of county where the majority of uh, people reside, it's really important that they don't view this process or any process that um, we might be engaging in as a county seat uh, driven process. Um, if we want um, potential for creating a successful water agency, it is going to it is going to be uh, probably the most important thing that, that we can do is to not do anything that is are, that is going to make especially um, all of the uh, rural uh, public uh, public sector water utilities uh, have the slightest thought that um, this is something that is. Um, not only created by, but but run by um, the county seat. Uh, that was one of the that was one of the problems with the uh, water agency and in uh, in the past. You know, quite frankly, that was one of the main reasons that the that water agency at some point became uh, dysfunctional because it did not um, enjoy the um, support 
of the unincorporated areas and the, and the water utilities that are, that are in those areas. I'm, I'm keenly aware of that, and thank you for bringing it up. And that's why we, I think when, when Chairman Williams asked me to come up with five good projects to work on, that's what we were thinking, is that let's not just focus on one thing. Let's be sure that uh, any efforts are, are countywide, because all parts of the county need some assistance. Supervisor well, we, Haschuk. <laughs> we got communication from Jim Shields you know, a month or so ago, outlining kind of the information that he thought that we needed to collect and collate from around the county. So, you know, time is is moving on. And maybe what we could do today is, like you've talked about the, the TAC, mm -hmm. Technical Advisory Committee, and I think Jim has volunteered, maybe Beth too, to help kind of get some of this information together maybe right now we could kind of come up with a, a, a working group mm -hmm. to to reach out and get that information from the different water districts so we can move this along you, you know we certainly can can make that a recommendation to the board to consider because that's partially what we're doing today is is uh kind of we're, we're flying this for, for refinement, you know, my ideas, and then also coming up with other things we think are important that the Board of Supervisors consider as a whole. Uh, yeah. So I, I, that's great. I guess would would this need approval of the board to do a, like a task force, or, or can we just do it? I believe you should go back to the board with that recommendation. Right now, this is a standing committee, um, and you have complying with Brown Act, have your public meetings. I think it would be something you should bring back to the full board. Okay, we'll do that. That's on my checklist of what to do. Okay, next image. Thank you, Jim, for your input. So District 4 is increasing surface water storage for the city of Fort Bragg. Uh, so. Fort Bragg uh, depends on surface water diversions from the Noyo River, which is an adequate supply in normal years, but in dry years, the flow may be greatly reduced. For instance, I, I think in a, in, a, in a good year, they're probably flowing at the, the rate of 200 to 300 cubic feet per second, uh, you know, in, in, in the early in the season, and it goes down. Last year, it got down to below one cubic foot per second, which is, that's a cubic foot per second is about 490 gallons per minute, so that was, you know, a trickle. And uh, salt water started backing up into their water supply, which fortunately they, they had, uh, by that time, they were able to have their uh, desalination equipment in place. So uh, it, it's great to have backup. Um, presently, the system has about 45 acre feet, which is marginal in dry years. It's adequate probably in a normal year but there's a desire on their part to go up to 200 acre feet of storage over time to ensure that there's adequate water supply when drought years occur. 200 acre feet is really not that much, by the way. So my next door neighbor, uh, who's a vineyardist, has 75 acre feet of frost ponds on his place and it's 116 acres of grapes. So it shows you that uh, 200 acre feet is a modest amount of, money, of water. In addition to supply in Fort Bragg, this water system provides potable water that is trucked to communities from Fort Bragg to Albion when drought conditions cause uh, dry wells in the coastal areas, especially around the town of Mendocino. So they actually supply quite a lot b beyond the, the uh, city limits. So this is a, like Ukiah, that's kind of an important uh, hub for, for water. and. It, it could be improved, and I, we, we know that the area south of Fort Bragg is, is pretty water insecure, and long term it would be good if there was more of a distribution system, but that's a you know, big task to undertake that uh, the coastal community itself has got to consider. Um, it wouldn't be something that I would force on them, but I would recommend it. I'd recommend that there was a way of providing water all the way from Fort Bragg to, to the town of Mendocino uh, and, and having a, a, a water supply that again, is, is capable of supporting the, the communities through dry years. Well, I know that the county helped um, write the, or fund the writing of the grant proposal for the $8 million that they got for their um, renewing their lines and that kind of work. And so um, 
you know, that was a very successful endeavor. Uh, Darcy, do you care to comment on that? So uh, Darcy Antle, our CEO, is with us today. Yes, hello. Um, yeah, so uh, when the drought task force was activated last year and through a series of meetings and collaboration between the county and our community partners, we were able to supply the grant writer that worked with the city of Fort Bragg to obtain that grant at the direction of this board. Yeah, so th there's an example of, of support that uh, it, that we can do uh, that, again, we weren't the lead on that, but we certainly were supportive and, and we had some, uh, you know, special status as, as a county uh, in a drought emergency with the state of California. So they were kind of looking to us uh, to, you know, to provide some leadership and, and help, help the state understand the situation better. So um, that's the kind of thing that I see us being as good good partners when when uh, communities have good ideas for how to fix things. I don't think we have anybody on the line from Fort Bragg to uh, um, to discuss this. John Smith is not here, but uh, this is again a very important uh, project. I know that they are. It's a it's a phase project. They're trying to acquire property. They're trying to. Um, do grant applications and uh, that's their goal. They feel like if they have 200 acre feet that will allow them to go uh, through a couple of years of drought without too much issue. And I could see this as really the county would be backup to. Yes. Fort Bragg's got their plan. You know, they might need help at times, but really, you know, we would be um, not the lead. We would not. So uh, there's a couple things that we could help with when, that Devin pointed out. Some of this could be in the area of planning and permitting as well. So uh, if there's issues uh, that, that Fort Bragg has where they're developing um, infrastructure outside of their city limits, it's something where Mendocino County can help expedite uh, some of the, the planning. I'm pretty sure they're not in the coastal development zone where they're looking at this, which is a good thing because that would takes forever to, to process through so uh, you know again we can we can provide support services with that and with LAFCO uh, so th these are things that we can do to assist in the development of the project okay on to number five number five is also a, a big ticket item and that's the modernization of Mendocino City wastewater treatment plant so it's hard to believe, but it was designed over 50 years ago. Uh, the facility is aging and needs rebuilding and upgrading to provide tertiary treated water that can be used for landscaping, or so-called purple pipe. Presently, they also only have a three-day emergency storage facility for untreated wastewater, which is inadequate should a breakdown <laughs> incapacitate the facility. So should they lose uh, you know, a major piece of equipment in the system, three days is not very long to uh, impound all of the, the effluent from this, the sewer system. So uh, they're well aware that they, they have kind of an issue. And finally, the town of Mendocino is very water insecure. The modern tertiary water treatment can be used for landscape irrigation and possible groundwater replenishment during uh, summer months when over 25% of the wells uh, uh, supplying the town go, of the water go dry. So we, we know long term that Mendocino County is, or city of Mendocino has some issues over water. So uh, the wells that are there, a lot of them are very old. Um, the wa water table is a perched water table on top of rock and clay, and it's not down very deep. And, and by definition, um, usually you have to have a sanitary seal down for 50 feet before you hit water, that uh, water cannot infiltrate into the well. Uh, and that, at the moment, is, I don't know how many wells meet those standards, but I don't think very many. So I see Marlena's on the, on the line. So Marlena, I don't, if we could bring you into the meeting for a second and just talk about that whole issue of, of, of sanitation and wells and how the, the town of Mendocino might be in a tough place. Marlena?
Okay, here we go. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I thought you could add to the conversation. Well, it's complicated in that the water system in, is really everyone's wells and monitoring how much everyone is using out of their own private wells. And the majority of those wells are hand dug wells that range from 100 years old to even older and um, to 50 years old. And there are no records. People didn't pull permits from the county. They dug the wells and they kept them. And the positive part is that there, there is the sewer system. That was one of the main reasons why they created and got funding for their sewer system because their water situation, it's, it's not a water district that has um, a well or a spring or a pond that all the water is being treated from and then sent to the properties. Each property's individual private water well collectively managed is the water district. And as you guys know, they, they, um, those wells that are shallow go dry uh, in the dry season. I'm not sure if I answered your question. Yeah, so, so that was part of it. I mean, you gave a good description and they, they do collectively manage. So um, they, they have to, uh, they are some of the most water efficient people in the county because they just don't have much water to work with. And the, the, uh, the community services district, um, uh, I guess, helps manage the amount of water people are able to use. I, 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 I'm assuming it's metered somehow. Uh, but in addition to that, the uh, modern wells uh, typically have some sort of a sanitary seal on them, don't they, to pr protect yes. uh, surface water from getting into them? And I, I guess that's a real challenge for, for Mendocino. Yes, if, you're, if your groundwater is what the state would call groundwater under the direct influence of surface water, so those top 50 feet, pretty much, if that's where your water's coming in from, and that's the only water, then it's it's definitely likely that it's in a hand dug well and it is not sealed and it is coming from the area that we prefer not to have it come but the mitigation for that for the septic is the the sewer treatment so at least that's been done uh, you know there there is a discussion of of super treatment of the water to where it could be put back into the ground uh, from from a couple of different approaches one of them would be landscaping the other one would be also, uh, uh, in Southern California, they do have very, very heavily treated water that is put into the ground uh, for reuse, and that's a possibility for Mendocino um, as a possible project uh, if they can't find any other water source. Uh, the, probably the other thing on the wish list for Mendocino is to have some sort of centralized collection, and there's been some discussions about maybe having uh, water from the surface of the runways at the airport. Uh, be captured and uh, reused and uh, uh, as well as some some uh, well development or other impoundment of water from that region so that's a long-term project that would take a fair amount of uh, of expense for for studies as well as for infrastructure so uh, long-term Mendocino needs a water source John any thoughts or comments um, no I'm just thinking about the overall the plan, the five mm -hmm. district approach. And I just, uh, you know, I guess representing some of the smaller districts and the, you know, we have 42 water districts of some sort in the county. And, you know, a lot of those have a lot less capacity than the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking about the county's role and I'm sure our CEO is thinking about $25,000 here and $40,000 there, and it all adds up to real money before you know it. And so, so it's kind of like, how do we meet the needs of those who really need it mm -hmm. and, and yet stay within our, our lane, I guess, financial lane and the role that we as a county can best provide to these water purveyors? And, so, yeah, well, uh, Sarah, if you bring us back to to image number one, I think we'd, it, it'd be worth revisiting. But what I think we can do is that political advocacy, really, really important for these big projects, to, to let them know that as a county, we feel this is really, really important. And 
and worked directly with uh, Assemblyman Wood and, and Senator McGuire. And, uh, you know, having a resource water uh, team that is uh, a water resource team, rather, who, who is able to address everything from the individual homeowner who is wondering about how do I set up an ozonation system to, uh, you know, uh, a medium-sized uh, water district of, of 40 or 50 hookups that is also wondering, too, about meeting the, the uh, drinking water standards and, and getting advice about how to do that. Um, all of those things, public stakeholder meetings, and in most cases, Mendocino counties will support and not necessarily lead if other agencies are involved. So that's kind of the approach that I, as I heard our water discussion with the board, that's what I heard uh, as we, we move forward. This is the direction I think we're going. Did you hear the same thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, those are all good goals. I think that that's what... Um, you know, a lot of the agencies in the county need. Um, I'd like to hear more from any of the purveyors who are out there or any, any directors of water agencies if this is the right track. And, um, you know, I think that the creation of the water county, Mendocino County Water Resource Team, it's a good approach if we can use um, UC Cooperative Extension as much as possible, that's certainly um, using the resources the, and the brains that we have in this county to, to the best effect and also some of the support services too that they might provide. Well exactly that's what I thought when I thought about how are you going to do this if you don't have a lot of money to, to do a full-blown agency well how do you improvise and you know we do have some certainly we have a lot of really smart knowledgeable people in the community about water um, it, it's just that it, in the end, you're still working with volunteers that have other uh, time limitations. But partnering with them, when we, we partner with people like Elizabeth Solomon and uh, Janet Pauley and Sean White and Jim Shields, these are people who really know water, and uh, they, they can help extend us. So they can, we can leverage a lot of knowledge that's in the community, but there still needs to be stable leadership that is able to uh, help us as, as we try to chart a plan, uh, because this is going to be yet another issue we always have in Mendocino County, a huge area. Uh, it's hard for us to field a team. You know, we, we don't have a big population, so we, we have to think creatively about how we're going to solve some of these issues. And it's not always about money. It's also about people. This is Darcy Ann, CEO, and uh, Deputy CEO Sarah Pierce is on. Um, we would just like to report out that we did send out the water survey today that we had sent out prior, so it's gone back out. And uh, Sarah, I don't know if there's a timeline and if you could uh, tell us what email that goes back to. I'm Sarah Pierce. So the email was sent out this morning um, and we are asking for uh, results to be returned by September 30th. So it's a fairly short turnaround. And we're asking for results to be uh, sent back to the disaster recovery email that was noted in the survey. And then we will um, gather all of the information and the hope is that we can bring it back at the next standing committee. Okay, good. So is the information that you're asking for what was done before? Or are we oh, yeah. asking for the information that was um, like Jim Shields, you know, memo laid out? Um, basically the same information that was asked for before. Um, and it does have a little bit of the information. It asks how many um, residents you may be serving. Um, and then it asks for some of the district's uh, highest priorities, what um, uh, projects that they would like to see not specifically asking for reports to be submitted or um, gathering of that information. Not the, but you're asking for the capital improvement project wish list and operational wish list. Correct, Darcy Antle, CEO. I think kind of the challenge, particularly with some of these water purveyors to start sending reports and create, they don't really have the support staff to create a lot. Of, of additional reports to be sent in on a regular basis where, you know, the large places we can get it from, but 
not always are they the ones that are in dire straits that need to be reporting back. So I think this survey is a good start. And then it may be that we need to engage them. I don't know if it's one-on-one -on -one or, or go back out like you all did before and have some additional conversations to get down a little more deeper into the, to the weeds if we need to. And, and in the long run, I'm, I'm thinking about this. Uh, so, so the county is, is kind of hiring a, a, our water resource specialists on, on kind of short term maybe. We're not sure how that's going to turn out for long term funding because we haven't really identified a good source of money yet to, to do that. But the good news is that the UC Cooperative Expansion uh, uh, kind of hydrology and, and climate change specialists will be with us for hopefully a long time. And that's the kind of work that they're it's in their job description to help with community assessment and uh, problem solving. So, you know, we will have, one way or the other, we will have uh, support and a concerted effort here in Mendocino County to do something about water on multiple levels from, from small scale to large, so. I guess one of the tasks that we were kind of sent off to do was to figure out how much this would cost overall. So, so I guess, my question is to the CEO, have we been able to analyze what what this team might cost us? And that's including like the CEO, executive office staff or staff from the Howard's uh, you know, Department of Transportation or any of the other um, costs associated. To this point, Sarah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we only have a rough draft on what we're gathering to try and how to put all this together with the assistant, um, with the assistance of Howard DeShield's team, um, looking at who all we need to bring on. And I believe, uh, Sarah, was the budget, did we ended up with the budget of 250 for this? Correct. Um, this is Sarah. There was 250,000 that was set aside from the pg e a drought funding and I believe a portion of that is also going to cover the consultant that may be hired uh, through the RFP and I believe Howard may um, have some more specifics on how much is covered by the um, consultant. In fact, we have only started to begin gathering the data. Um, we don't have a full cost. Howard, are you available for a quick discussion? Ah, good afternoon, uh, Supervisor McGordy, Supervisor Hashtag. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good. So uh, I've been listening. I've actually been here. Uh, I thought I could see more of what was going on at the meeting if I stayed at the office today. But it turns out I can't see anything anyway as far as his attendance. But um, let me just say that I'm really, um, you know, presently, as Supervisor McGordy said in the introduction, we have an RFP out. Uh, it's got a dozen tasks in it, a lot of what you've discussed today, and it's posted at the county website under uh, projects out to bid. You know, it's you can find that if you search it. And the, the scope I proposed is in there. And much of what we're talking about, I've tried to capture in that scope. Um, the whole idea of the technical advisory team of the five volunteers from each district, that's task three. Uh, task four deals with that consultant we would hire, um, compiling and updating the list, you know, beyond what Darcy and Sarah get in their response you know, updating the list of projects and even applying for five grants for each of the five priorities that that volunteer technical advisory committee would come up. I think if you read that, you'll find we're really, and, and, and the question you asked me to weigh in about, develop this budget. How will the water resource team work? How will the um, UC Cooperative Extension staff uh, share uh, some of the work and some of the budget as we reshuffle the water agency. So the hope is that it won't be too much longer using of the $250,000 the board appropriated. I think the budget 
we showed the board during the August 2nd meeting was I think a 225 for this consultant we're asking for proposals on. And then the other um, 12,000 was was for some of the time of the county staff to, um, you know, provide information to consultant. What we really need is someone with hours to devote to this um, instead of part time, you know, Howard, who, you know, just basically responds to uh, reacts to situations and doesn't really do the kind of real in depth. Um, work that you need done as far as developing the new water agency. Um, I think if you read that RFP, read those dozen tasks, you'll see that a lot of what you've been discussing here today, I think will be handled, including developing the budget and deciding what the various players, how much money they'd have to contribute. I've made that all part of the scope for the consultant. Um, I would also add, and the discussion you had about Brown app, once you have, and of course, Charlotte can correct me if I'm wrong, but once you have staff that are tasked by the board, you know, through approving this contract, you know, they'll be able to talk uh, informally with the water purveyors and put together the, the team. And then all they'll need to do is come back to this formal Brown Act meeting and formally present, you know, a lot of that offline work that uh, Jim Shields was talking about. So I think getting a good consultant through this RFP pursuant to the board's direction August 2nd will really do a lot of what you've been talking about. So with that, I'll shut up because I think I've talked long enough. No, it, well, well, thank you, Howard, for weighing in because I, you've been part of this process too with the RFPs and, and you, you bring up a really good point, which is that uh, <clears throat> expecting we don't really have any staff working specifically on this and, and having supervisors working on it is really problematic because we're, we're kind of like ADHD when it comes to projects. We're just, there's so much things that get thrown at us. It's hard for us to keep a, find the common thread and think about it and, and get stuff done. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to having somebody who's really dedicated and specifically on task to, to help us because we've gotten great ideas from from all of our uh, stakeholders as well as staff on, on what we can do. And again, we have to keep our thinking caps on because we don't have really a lot of money. It sounds like a lot, 250K, but for running a program uh, on a countywide level, that's that small scale. John. And I'm gonna ask Howard DeShiel a question about finances because last year we got the $2 million grant to do the water hauling to the coast and so, you know, we used, I forget what it ended up being last year, but 800,000 or 400,000 or... Uh, Sarah, you have that information. Um, I don't know if you have it right there with you, but there you go. Yeah, um, this is Sarah Pierce. I need to stop sharing so I can get to the file. One moment. And so my question is, since we aren't hauling water this year, and there's this extra money, and my understanding is January 1st, 2023, that the money has to go back to the state. So maybe it's in our interest to try to um, use that money in a different way and help out our water resource team or something to see if we can get any help from the state to redirect that money if we're not using it for water hauling. That's a obviously excellent idea. Do you have any insight into that, uh, Darcy? Is yeah, I believe we've reached out um, prior, but Howard, do you have any information or Sarah? Um, I'm believing we've reached out and um, we were a negative at the time, but um, I don't know if you guys have an update. Well, this is Howard. The the I read through the eligible activities under the rural communities, you know, drought relief program, which is the money we had to haul water. And I don't see where funding, you know, there could be some things that would be funded if we identified a project, but I think originally we were hoping to maybe fund some of this effort of the, um, of just the, uh, uh, 
water resource team and, and it didn't seem to me to be one again though with any luck we'll have a consultant on board before the first of the year that's still my schedule and um i'm not sure if the money reverts i think it might be february before it reverts maybe sarah knows but you know if there is a chance to sweep it into something different Hopefully we'll have someone with the savvy to do that. I, I don't have the savvy to do it. Maybe someone else does. Um, this is Sarah Pierce. So um, as of June 30th, we had spent about 260,000, um, but there's additional spending that's happened in the last three months that we will be billing for um, within the next few weeks. But we did have initial conversations with DWR asking if the funds could be reutilized and the initial uh, conversation was no, um, but we can reach back out um, now that we have a better idea of how much may be left to see if we could uh, revisit that with DWR. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. It's totally a good idea. And, <laughs> and this is where our, our political influence comes in too, because if we, we are working with uh, uh, Senator McGuire and uh, Assemblyman Wood, and we say, hey, the money's already here. I mean, you know, you've already allocated it. And we're, we're still very much community in need. So we'll we'll have to, uh, again, put our thinking caps on and see what we can do. So so, so that, that basically, I think, wraps up the item 2A. And uh, item 2B, in some respects, we've covered already. And I'm trying, I guess we're trying to, John? Uh, oh. Uh, if there's anybody available for uh, public comment, this would be a good time to make it on item 2A. I, do we, we have hands up or? Yes, we do. So, uh, Devin? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Devin Bohr, Mendocino County Farm Bureau. Uh, looking at the last slide, I believe um, the committee was planning to bring some level of conversation back to the full board on October 4th. And I guess my question would be based on the conversation today, some of the outlying questions, um, how could those, you know, following this sort of conversation provide feedback or assistance to make that conversation more productive on October 4th? Well, that's a good question. So we'll we'll have kind of a a, a summary of, of what we've heard today, uh, and then I I think if if you can also be available when the item comes forward on the uh, the fourth, it, it would be great to to hear from you again to for support, particularly if you have advice on on direction, uh, on not only the the five projects that I've outlined, but other things you think are important. Did that answer your question, Devin, or do you still have other things you're wondering about? No, that's fine. I just wasn't sure if you wanted, like, you know, formal comment or if you just sort of, you know, what was envisioned for, for coming back to the board on the 4th that was going to be, you know, sort of maybe an amended proposal, you know, based on if you can get feedback again, you know, since John was on vacation or, you know, from the, from the other districts in terms of, you know, bringing something, you know, kind of. Uh, version 2.0 to the board. Yeah, so um, I will follow up with people we didn't hear from today, like John Smith and and uh, uh, others, so that so that they've seen what I'm thinking, and I'll be sure that we're not overlooking or leaving something on the table. Well, and the other part is the questionnaire that got the survey yes. that got sent out, and then how do we incorporate that into whatever? Yeah, back so, so that, that's a good question. It's, it's sort of not really part of the agenda item, but there may be a way for us to, to in, in part, um, under supervisors' reports, we could talk about reporting from this meeting, and that would be one of the ways that we could include the information. Okay, so uh, anybody else for a public comment? I thought I, thought I saw another hand. Two hands. Who else? I'm not seeing on my screen. So. Jim Shields. Jim Shields. Jim. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So as, as far as some of the things we've talked about so far, the the uh, email that was sent out by Darcy and Sarah this morning, that's it's kind of a mix of things. I'm not really asking for um, information that 
it's going to be difficult for water agencies to respond to, but kind of incorporates, um, it's a five, uh, SB 552 survey, some of the questions in there. Um, I suspect that a lot of your smaller water districts probably aren't even aware of S SB 552. Um, and then the, the, the other two areas, just to kind of uh, go over ground covered previously a little bit, but the, the, the two other main sources of information that, that I was trying to get a jump start on, and hopefully that'll be resolved at the October 4th meeting, although I'd like to get started on it earlier, but um, would, be the, would be the water information data uh, collection uh, collation project. And then the second one would be the uh, capital and operational um, projects. And, and be honest on that one, everybody who's um, a general manager or a manager, or director of a <clears throat> municipal water department you, you walk around with these priority lists, you know, <laughs> in your head all the time, your top three, top five, um, that, that would be work that wouldn't take all that long, um, to complete because there would just be, or the TAC committee or, you know, this resource team, whoever that's going to be, that, that would be a task <clears throat> that they would take the initial cut at. Mm -hmm. Um, so. And, and all this stuff is important, you know, but again, um, you know, there, there is a sense of urgency. And as far as this water resource team, it's really going to be important, you know, getting back to getting the support of your public sector water utilities that um, there's representation from that group also. I agree. Yeah. Good points. Thank you. And then Elizabeth, you have your hand up as well. There we go. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Elizabeth Salamone, serving as general manager to the Russian River Flight Control District. Um, Supervisor Heschek, you asked a bit ago about feedback from those of us who had already um, provided comment today regarding, you know, this the five projects over, you know, a sort of more general view. And I agree with you that I think. It's very important to make sure that those who are not under the umbrella of a water supplier or an agency of some sort, um, that, though, that they are not overlooked because their only representation is the Board of Supervisors through the water agency. So these projects, while are, they're very worthy, they do seem to focus on um, entities that, that have some amount of capacity and um, expertise in in order to move forward with projects so i think we just need to you know i would suggest really looking at that making sure there aren't folks that are slipping through the cracks on that um i'm a little bit confused about the next steps with the five projects is it that the supervisors are going to sort of review them and say yeah we generally like the recommendation but then it's going to wait until the consultant is on board and then they're going to move forward that's kind of how, as Howard was saying, the RFP is written sort of like that. It's, so that's a little bit vague. There could be some firming up before the next, uh, before you present this to the supervisors would be a suggestion. And then um, SB, is it 552, this drought task force requirement, um, a little bit more clarity on how the terms, you know, the requirements of, of that Senate bill are being met with this committee um, and if all the boxes are being checked i think that's another really good point um, to bring you know to discussion either here and or to the full board thank you yeah well thank you elizabeth um so so my task was just to identify five major or just five projects i thought were worthy of of support from mendocino county it was not really specific how we would support them but uh, those are the five that identified as I see as top priorities that are important to different districts. And, and that's me kind of with a leap of faith in a way of, of having listened to many conversations saying this is what I keep hearing over and over again that are important things that we need to fix. And um, our, our roles vary in those. So um, I, I like your point, Elizabeth, about, okay, what about people who aren't really represented specifically by any particular agency or anything, because there are a lot of people who are their own water companies, like myself, uh, who has two wells and 
20,000 gallons of water storage. And, and you know, um, I, I face a water crisis every year and my two wells go dry. That's where I am right now. So uh, how do we help people like that as well? These are things that we, we need to also take into consideration. I'm kind of hoping for the UC Cooperative Extension person to address a lot of the, the smaller individual uh, homeowner, landowner issues. Uh, we have a lot of people supplied by springs and small wells that are water insecure, and and uh, we we need to address that as well. A whole subgroup, along with the whole issue of of water conservation that Elizabeth talked about, that I, th I think that's something that we 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 can't overlook. Those overarching overarching projects, John. Well, I think Elizabeth's points are well taken. I, you know, those the five district projects. You know, that's a great start. And, you know, I think that as time goes on, hopefully we get this tack going and we get the information, you know, the surveys that people, that a water resource team would really need and we can incorporate those and mix and match or, you know, modify as needed. And I think that that would be a good process moving forward, you know. I, I agree. And, and I think that, uh, Beth's other point about the SB 552 requirements, and um, I guess I'm looking to county council for um, if if we're fulfilling our obligation as far as the state requirements for SB 552, and um, if if we need to do anything else in this meeting. So, so this isn't Charlotte's normal uh, uh, <laughs> silo, so <laughs> we're not going to hold her to it unless she has some thoughts. I am familiar with, um, with the act, and I believe that the board designated the standing committee as the, to be acting as the required drought um, committee that the statute intended. Um, I haven't reviewed the other portions of the act. Um, there may be other obligations, and we, we'd be happy to advise you if there's any more that is needed. But for purposes of the committee, I believe that you have satisfied that by holding your standing committee meetings the last couple of months. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, the, the next item on the agenda, we've kind of done in a way. So it, it was discussion and possible action, consideration of input from, including consideration of input from uh, local water districts, purveyors, and community partners regarding uh, SB 552 drought planning for smaller water suppliers in rural communities. So um, I, I would just open it up if there's any additional comments from uh, people on the call. Uh, Deborah Edelman, I see you have your hand up. Hi, thank you for taking the call. I'm Deborah Edelman, Mendocino County Resource Conservation District. Um, First of all, thank you for all the thought you've put into these various um, possible projects for the five districts. I think they all are important and worthwhile. Um, as far, I just wanted to mention, um, I did attend a workshop on SB 552, and certainly I'm not an expert, but there were two things that were mentioned in the workshop as requirements, one of which is a risk assessment for vulnerable communities in the county. Um, and development of a drought, uh, I don't know if it's called a drought contingency plan, um, a drought water shortage contingency plan uh, for the county. So, um, you know, the, the projects you're talking about could certainly be part of that, I'm sure. And as I recall, I think there may be some funding that's going to be coming uh, for counties to fulfill that those obligations. Um, so, just something to can, consider and keep an eye on for the future. Well, thank you, Deborah, um, and I haven't followed this legislation as close as I need to, um, and certainly the, because of, the, it says it right in our title here in the name of our committee, which is Public Health, Safety, and Resources, uh, it fits totally in our mission to to uh, work on the things like drought assessment, and again, our, our surveys are, are, are one way of, of finding out uh, where we stand with different communities and how they're, they're their assessment of where they st uh, their water supplies are. So uh, it changes throughout the year and it changes by the season. So this is a good time though of the year to, to be asking people about where do you, where are you because this is the driest time of the year and this is when people are most likely to be water insecure. 
Any other comments, Supervisor Hasjak? No. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak before we conclude? Darcy Antle, CEO, if I can clarify, and perhaps Atlas has it, but next steps were to the full board to approve the five district priorities. Um, Howard's working on the RFP. Concurrently, we will be working to create the water resource task team. Did I miss anything? There was some discussion about the SB 552, but um, I'm not quite sure I gathered. Uh, so so uh, the SB 552, um, we're supposed to be tasked with a risk assessment for vulnerable communities, for water security, uh, as well as a drought water storage contingency plan. And some of those things we sort of have, so uh, our, our work from last year certainly addresses that with water hauling. It, it's only for part of the county, but that's an example of the kinds of things that we would want, want to be able to do. Is Director DeShield still on about the SB 552? Yes, he is. Yes, yeah, so um, I, it was my impression that our meeting today, taking input was, you know, kind of a minimum that we needed to do. And the hope is, and again, I guess I keep referring to the scope I wrote for the RFP, scope task three, if you wanna go in and read that, uh, again, it's posted online, is for the consultant to, um, you know, refine the existing list of water needs, uh, you know, the apps for the infrastructure to help the communities and stakeholders remedy their water resiliency and supply. The consultant will organize the five volunteers from the many water stakeholders who participated in the drought emergency ad hoc committee, which became SB 255, uh, this task force and they, the steering committee, and that we envision the five volunteers will be selected by supervisorial district and formed into a technical advisory committee to provide recommendations to the board on projects to support. So I, I suppose we could get a jump start on that task three um, and then be able to hand it off to the consultant once we've hired them. But yes, that was very clear that the board wanted us to move in that direction. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, how you pick those five, I thought it might be that the five individual board members would, you know, kind of like they do planning commissioners recommend somebody. But I don't know that it has to be a formal, like uh, planning commission. I, I think it could be put together by the uh, consultant I'm not sure how that'll work. Um, Howard, one more question. Um, is part of this covered in the HM, um, in our hazard mitigation plan, do you believe, some of these risks? Well, I cited the hazard mitigation plan as an existing county policy because they wanted us to have policies. And there are drought policies in county code and in the hazard mitigation plan but some of these other things that the board wants us to do, for instance, this technical advisory committee, I think are above and beyond that. But yes, we have formally have that white paper that cites our hazard mitigation plan and county code, that's correct. I, I know also just for the record from, from last year's work with, with Josh Metz, we did have uh, Kind of a summary of projects so we, we already have one that was done a year ago uh, some of them have been completed actually some of the things that were on the list so we've started that process and and we do have kind of the assessment of needs from from some of the different water um, districts it's not complete it's not comprehensive but it does exist and I, I was just looking to see if i had it on this computer and i don't so um, i know that i forwarded to darcy and i think sarah so i know that it exists and that would be a, a place for us to start. Well, uh, we've gone a little bit beyond time, and uh, John? Well, before we adjourn, we still have item 3A. Oh, okay, sorry. Approval of the minutes. 
have the old pro here who knows how to run a meeting. Okay, so uh, that concludes discussion on 2B and 3A is other business, which is approval of minutes of August 15th, 2022 regular meeting. And the recommended action is approved minutes of the uh, August 15th, 2022 regular meeting. Well, I'll move approval. Okay, and I'll second and we both vote yes. Okay, with that, uh, we, we have one final last chance. If you want to say something, we have public expression and announcements. I think we can combine them if anybody has something that they want to share with us before we conclude. Let's see, I see a hand is up from Elizabeth. Thanks, Glenn. Just, I didn't quite get my hand up in time for the, pre, the, the last item, but I just think overall with the, the agenda items you've done today, you've got this idea of the five projects to bring forward and then really there's like two other county-wide things which are the outreach and education slash um you know water use efficiency rebates that kind of thing that's mm -hmm. sort of public engagement piece and then the compliance with sb 552 which really is digging into the assessment of the water situation for the entire county population. And I think right there, you have two projects that would be phenomenal for everyone in the county. But even if you, you know, didn't assign those, that could be your at-large projects or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. I think you have a nice package to take to the supervisors to discuss and then um, hand over to the consultant potentially. And, um, you know, and we did discuss some of these projects today that there might be some, uh, adjustments that could be made that would make them more, um, inclusive, um, maybe or something. So I think it's a really good start. And I really appreciate that you've allowed, um, for, you know, some of your, um, water professionals in the area to speak so much today and be a part of the collaborative process. I think, that's the intent I, of SB 52 as a drought task force kind of feel is to get more engagement from your water leadership that exists and also be available to the public. So I, I hope it only becomes more open and accessible to all. Well, well, thank you, Beth. And you, you brought up a couple of good things that are overarching that serves all of the community. And we will definitely, I will move that forward when I have a discussion with the, the board is something else that I think is important for us to do and we will uh, kind of report back on on uh, SB 552 and, and how we're addressing that as a committee. Any, anyone else before we close the meeting? Okay, All right, so we, we've had public expression, uh, and then finally, announcements. Any announcements uh, from the group? Hearing none, I think the meeting can be adjourned. Thank you very much for participating. Much appreciated. Okay.